Hello, I'm Richard Vobes, the bald explorer, and I'm out on another walk. This time, I'm coming up to St. Wilfrid's Chapel, near Selsey, down in West Sussex, at a place called Church Norton. Selsey is on the southwestern extremity of Sussex. The whole area is remote and adjacent to the natural harbour besides Pagham. I'm here to look at the tiny chapel, which was once part of a bigger church, St Peter's. But the main body of the church, the nave, has been removed and only the chapel remains, now redundant. It's been rededicated to St Wilfrid, who is said to have built a monastery somewhere on this site in Saxon times. I was curious about this Saxon history and asked Martin Snow to tell me more. Now this, this sort of little bit of um, Sussex here is believed to be a point where the old Saxons, the, the first South Saxons, going back to 477, I believe. About then. Um, came in. Yes. And sort of created a settlement here on this old bit of land. That's where they, yeah, after the Romans left, yes. um, they, they claimed it as their own. Right. Also, whether this is the actual site of the cathedral for Sussex uh, that was founded. Because um, there was a cathedral, wasn't there? Was there was a here cathedral that the Saxons at, at had. Selsey. At Selsey. Um, and, and then the Normans, the Normans moved the sea, didn't they, to... Chichester. To Chichester, yes, um, of, the, of the diocese. Of the diocese, right. That's right. Um, but this church is later than that, or the, this chapel. Whatever was on this site before, yes. uh, certainly what we see now um, is from the 12th century. Let's go and have a, have a look at it. If we go around the back end first, only because there's a rather um, interesting little statue here. Also, you get a, a sense of the... The, the church when it would have been a, a far bigger church. The building is actually bigger than some whole churches. Yes. So this is a church that's not, not abandoned. No, it's been declared redundant, redundant. in 1990. That's the technical right. term, isn't it? Yeah, that's when, a technical term. When a church is no longer used by no, the no parish? Longer, it's no longer needed by, by the Church of England for the parish. So, right. So it was... Um, is that because it becomes an expensive thing? They've got to have somebody that come here and hold services? Or is it because people just don't come and there is no need for a congregation? Um, well, it just would have been too, too few people to justify it. The chancel is just the sort of the east end of the church, isn't it? Normally you'd have the nave, which is traditionally the bigger bit. Big building, yes. Did the been. nave come first in a church and then the chancel? Or um, all part and parcel of the same fabric? Well, quite often they'd be, you know, one before the other. Uh, often, you know, depending on when the church was established, you'd have the nave first. And right. And then they'd expand into yes. a chancel or it would be quite small and they'd add the nave as they needed the space. But yeah, big arch behind and so that infill just around the door wouldn't have been there when it no, was St no, Peter's. No, it would been open and looking out into... Now you, before we started filming you said, you know, the size of the church doesn't necessarily relate to the size of the village or the parish. That's right. I mean, yeah. because, um, well, you've well, got, to have, got, to, got to be in credit with God. Investment in the church fabric was seen as a way to increase one's favour in the afterlife. What notable features are there here that uh, are worth looking at? Um, well, there's a, behind, behind me here is a, uh, is a tomb. Um, if, if I'd done my homework, then yeah. I could have told you who, who, who it was. Um, but that's you know, obviously something Somebody, quite important because they're very close to the Right, and that, would, that would mean presumably that they've given money Oh, without a doubt, yes. <laughs> towards yes. it, or they've been very influential. Um, yes. Now, you, we've walked up here in this area. Is this the sanctuary? Uh, this, yes. This we, little be, bit behind, behind the bar? Be, behind, behind the bar. <laughs> well, you, yes. I mean, this is a literal bar, isn't it? Yes, it's a bar yeah. that bars us from bar, coming bar, up bars, onto the... Yes. Um, at one time, it had to be filled in to stop the dogs getting up here. Today, it's used for the communicants, people taking... Um, communion yes. to, to kneel at and, re and receive. Um, it also forms a barrier um, and this part here, as you say, was would be called the sanctuary. Yeah. Um, I mean, the fact that the reason I asked is 
you always feel that this has been barred, this is a place where you shouldn't, the members of the public shouldn't normally go. That is, yeah, it's, it's sort of reserved. Let's, for the um, let's just, uh, let's, yeah, yeah, let's we're not go. priests, you know, we're not priests, so let's just get out of that then. An interesting feature is this small area that probably doubles as a vestry or space for a prayer meeting. Outside, the chapel is well situated in a spacious graveyard, well managed and ordered, with a large number of more recent headstones than one might have expected. It is a beautifully situated chapel, adjacent to the nature reserve at Pagham Harbour. But why, I wondered, was the larger part of the church removed, leaving the chancel now a chapel? Well, the reason is simple, that during the Victorian period, the town of Selsey, a mile or so away, grew so much that the demand for its own church was required, and with dwindling numbers at Church Norton, the obvious answer was to move it, stone by stone, to the more needful site. Well, there we go, a little potted history, ladies and gentlemen, of um, this wonderful little chapel isolated, but in a very large graveyard, it has to be said. I mean, a huge amount. It stretches for miles around. I thank you, Martin, for suggesting it and uh, bringing me down here. My pleasure. And, and we'll see you on the next one. Until then, goodbye. Bye-bye.